Hello and welcome back and it's time for another SSD review and today we're looking at another PCIe Gen 4x4 M2 NVMe. This is Gigabyte's Aurorus 7000S. This is one of their top tier SSDs and it's another one of the SSDs arriving in the early to mid 2021s which has that Fison processor, you know, the same one as the Sabrent, the same one as the Fire Cuda, the same as the MSI. That is a controller that's really getting around. And today, I want to talk about their entry into this marketplace. Now, unsurprisingly, we have been talking a lot about SSDs recently, not only because this newer generation of SSDs have really blossomed after a bit of a delay because of the pandemic and shortages and stuff, but also, of course, PS5 allowing compatibility with SSDs in the latest uh, beta software release for their console platform. This has resulted in an enormous upsurge in the interest in these SSDs. And this is one of the outsiders because a lot of the time the focus is being drawn to the likes of the Samsung 980 Pro, the WD Black, the Fire CUDA series from Seagate, and of course we've given our own attention recently to that of the Sabrent. But this is one that I want to talk about because one, it's one of the few SSDs that's actually still widely available, despite the fact it being quite impressively specced with a 7,000 megabytes per second sequential read and this 1TB model allowing 5,500 500 megabytes uh, per second sequential write. This is a very, very impressive SSD, arriving at around $180 to $200 at this size. There is also a 2TB model available, but as everyone will know, because of things like Cheer, and of course, the update on gaming console support of SSDs in general suddenly spiking, availability and pricing is all over the place right now in summer 2021. So hopefully when you're watching this in the future, things have got a little bit better. Today's review is going to be taking a little look at this SSD, what you get for your money what it can do and then we're going to get it into the test machine and run our usual test with all of the benchmarking software from Atto to um, a SSSD checker and more so here we go that is the box we've got this nice um, holographic label then let's be honest with the lighting in this studio that is doing absolute wonders for me there I think I'm tripping just looking at it and again there's information on the rear there about the SSD what you get for your money if we slide it out of the box, we'll leave that there. We can take a closer look. It comes in a little carton there. Uh, let's have a little look inside. Again, this is a PCIe Gen 4 times uh, 4 SSD. That means that potential maximum bandwidth of 8,000 megabytes per second. And this SSD promising that 7,000 mark in ideal situations is a pretty good sell. Immediately, one of the first things that strikes me about this SSD is it arrives with a heatsink as standard. This is arriving with the heatsink in the price. We can have a look. It's a really nice contained um, heatsink as well. We'll bring that closer to the camera. And that SSD heatsink there, got to say, being slim enough, that is going to go straight inside the PS5. Absolutely no denying it there. And again, it's a closed system all the way underneath. If we look down the barrel of it there, we can see that that M2 key connector there it's a nice bit of cushioning there with a heat pad underneath and above. And of course the heat sink there across the top. Again, this is the 1TB model. I think it will be remiss not to remove it from its external casing there. And take a little closer look of what this SSD looks like without the heat sink on top. Let's get that out of there. Right, so we're getting that out of the heat sink. And immediately we've got a lovely chunky... Um, thermal pad there, all lovely and pre-connected there to the inside of the top heat sink. But what's really cool is immediately we're getting a nice close look at those internal chips there. No mucking around. Inside there, we can see a bit of residue there from the thermal paste at the top. We've got that size on base controller there at the top. Underneath, of course, we've got a little bit of HK Hynix memory and of course at the bottom we have got those NAND components. Now it's worth highlighting that these are uh, 96 layer NAND that's being utilized inside this SSD. That's how they're able to get uh, the performance up to where it is. On top of that of course the durability of this with drive rights per day rated at 0 0.38 so very close to 0 0.4 is still pretty good indeed. If we maneuver 
the SSD out of the base of the casing. Removing this SSD from the other side of the casing clearly shows that this is a single rank SSD. There's no NAND on the other side of that PCB and this 1TB is utilizing just the one side there all the way along. Bring that slightly close to the camera with the light there for you guys. But again, a lovely, solid, easy going SSD there. And because it's only the one side, it means it can be quite conservative about the amount of heat paneling inside there. But if we carry on looking about the inside of this SSD uh, retail kit, let's get that out of there. Have a look at the bottom here. We're going to get some sort of heavily warranty information. This uh, drive arrives with five years of manufacturer's warranty there. Get that out of there. On the base inside, we find first time setup instructions and connectivity. Again, straight from Gigabyte, lots of information there about your warranty but that's about it for what you get inside this ssd again it's a fairly you know this kind of ssd technology is still pretty high end um nvme version 1.4 so it's the latest revision commercially available it's taken advantage of that higher end pcie connectivity of course and of course the 96 lan and is always going to be a welcome addition alongside both one gigabyte of ddr4 memory and of course the fives on e18 controller there I would say it's arguably well constructed. I do like that it arrives with an incredibly uh, discreet and first party heatsink inclusive, and particularly that price point as well. And I guess all that's left to do is to find out what is the performance of this SSD with our normal benchmarking tools. So why don't we get up and move over to the test area? Right, so we've made our way onto the desktop of my test machine over here. We are using OBS to do the recording today, something I will touch on in just a moment. But I did think it was worth highlighting just some of the specifics of our machine, even though it's the same one we've used in other videos. Of course, I don't expect you to have seen every one of them. So we are using a Windows uh, 10 Pro based machine. It's an 11th gen uh, 6 core i5 processor inside there with 16 gig of DDR4 memory. And we are running that Windows 10 there on a Seagate Fire CUDA 120 SATA SSD. There is a PCIe Gen 4 x 4 M2 slot, as you can see, and we have populated it with our Gigabyte Aurora 7000S 1TB. It's all visible there. The temperature's lovely and low at 27C, although that will, of course, start to spike as this video persists. And on the top there, you can see that I've already allocated this drive there as an extra drive. I've gone into the storage manager. For those that aren't aware, lovely and easy, go into manage. From there, it will list the available drives. I think I've got a USB still connected to this device, but with the exception of that, it's all fairly plain sailing. You can see right there, that 1TB drive straight away. Now, we are gonna be running numerous tests here. We're gonna be running a crystal disk benchmark there. We're gonna be running a S benchmark. We are going to be running a bunch of other tools, ranging from Atto as well. But it is worth highlighting, as I've mentioned in other videos before, that it is quite tough to do uh, performance recording while using screen capture software. So I wanted to show you guys the setup, and then I'm going to spend a good 20, 30 minutes going through a barrage of tests and going through the results with you. Before I do that, I do think it's worth just showing you what I mean by the effect of screen recording software here where the system is both read and writing at the same time and at the same time it is also affecting the gpu count there so say for example on here we go for the g drive there if i was to do a four gigabyte test here click all and it will start performing the test but i'm willing to bet we will see a noticeable drop less than we would expect because of this screen recording software capturing there in the background as you can see that's already a very low read stat there so that's why we don't use screen recording software at the same time as running our performance benchmarks because it always hampers the results quite massively so what i'm going to do is reset the test there and i'm going to come back to this with um after we've done all of the tests just to show you can see the temperature's already gone up a little bit there and what I'm going to do is fast forward after going through each of these tests several times and showing you the results. Each test will be on this SSD, but it will also be on a varied variety of sizes and test regimens. So I look forward to showing you that. And of course, we will focus on the IOPS later on on Atto Disk benchmark, benchmark. But for now, let's fast forward to the completion of all of these tests. 
Right, so we finished the testing, and as you can see there on screen, we've got lots of stats to go through. But what I will highlight straight away, just to give us a sense of relativity, is here is the, uh, the Gigabyte official specifications for this SSD. They are highlighting that this 1TB will hit sequential maximum reads of 7,000 and sequential maximum writes of 5,500. It's also worth highlighting that they are stating 3,000... Uh, 350,000 read IOPS, uh, I believe uh, 4K and 700K at the right. So let's minimize there. The first test we're going to look at, of course, and I'm sure you've seen it already while I'm flicking through it, is our earliest test here using Crystal Disk Mark. We've got three different sized files here. So at the top left, as you can see, we have the one gigabyte test file. The top right, we have the four gigabyte test file. And we've got the 16 gigabyte massive test file at the bottom. And to be fair to this SSD, given that it had a reported maximum there, if we bring that down, it was stating that we would see, let's bring those specs back up, that we would hit 7,550. Fair play to it. That is pretty spot on. Again, there's lots of little tiny differences perhaps that could have changed things, but fair play to Gigabyte here. This is pretty darn close on all degrees of 1, 4, and 16 gig test file to exactly what they would said they said that this disk would do. If we look at the IOPS, the IOPS are a pinch less, than, less I would argue, but the IOPS, really, you have to bring things down quite significantly in this testing. And a lot of the time, IOPS can easily be capped by the system you're using. And as you know, as much as I love my PC system, it has to be said that it could be a lot more powerful, perhaps with a 12-core Xeon. And maybe this 6-core i5 isn't quite sufficient for this. But nonetheless, the Crystal Disk Mark figures there are still pretty impressive in my eyes. And I would still give this SSD a pat on the back from what we're seeing here on screen. Now, moving away from Crystal Disk Mark, we can make our way into Atto Disk Benchmark. Here, we once again ran three tests. We've got a four gigabyte test file on the right, on the left, 256 meg, so a quarter of a gig, and one gigabyte there in the middle of the screen. And we can see there during this course of testing, these are far more intensive overall compared to the previous tests. And we can see that we were hitting in terms of read 6.5, so 6.59, uh, or 6.86 really was the heaviest we hit. So that would have been 5,860 gigabytes. And that, um, what is it, um, the six, sorry, 659, I should say, 6,590, that was capped here as well in Atto Dismark. And all the way here at the end, once again, 659. Uh, the read didn't seem really to kick higher than 496, but that's still pretty darn close for intensive testing of what we're seeing here, and particularly within the confines of my test system, a standard desktop interface there. We flick these over to the IOPS for each one respectively. Accidental click there. We can see that those IOPS figures, again, are really only living in the hundreds of thousands, and Atto isn't really the same as what they're portraying there in their specs. So we're gonna kind of overlook that there. But again, IOPS we've already highlighted before in both this, the Gigabyte Aurora 7000S, and of course the MSI M480 Spatium. And along with that, of course, our earlier testing on that of the Sabrant Rocket Plus, we're able to see that yeah, the IOPS on these SSDs, unless they're using even better NAND or you know, in-house stuff like Samsung and WD or using that 176 layer NAND like Seagate, they're not really going to crack into the higher area result of IOPS that some of the other PCIe Gen 4 SSDs provide. But if we leave here, we can make our way into AS Disk. And from here, once again, we have 5 gig there on the right. We've got 3 gig there in the middle and 1 gig there on the left. And again, we're hitting lovely sequential numbers there. And once again, it's worth highlighting this is not the same as our earlier sequential direct testing we saw earlier in Crystal Disk Mark. This is far more centered around the idea of utilizing these AS benchmarks internally. Now, 
We can, of course, switch over to the IOPS inside here for each one of these. And as you can see here, we're seeing slightly better figures for measurements within IOPS. Indeed, some of the right IOPS there actually garnered quite a hefty load there. And it's quite impressive to see how they've all done it. And that's kind of a, a better place where AS, this benchmark, kind of gives more prescient results there. We can get a copy benchmark as well. So if we run a quick copy disk benchmark there, this is going to give you just a quick indication there of block file transfer. And we're just going to leave it there in the background to do its thing. But of course, because we're using the screen recording software, it is of course going to fail. So maybe we'll abandon that there. But what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to move over now to have all of these on screen. I think we can garner quite a lot of information here with regards to performance. I think it would be fair to say that Crystal Disk has kind of delivered a straight game on these. And I do think that um, Gigabyte here have given us exactly what we wanted, even on the mixed uh, read-write threshold there. The stats were still pretty good to be working with simultaneously. Um, and if you are looking at an SSD to upgrade for your PS5, you could do a lot worse than this disc. I think in terms of common gaming, um, as good as this disc is, I think it doesn't give the full realization of PC um, level gaming. And I think you're going to have to err towards the larger capacity there because that difference there of more than 1,350 in terms of sequential write is going to be noticeable even in the smaller files later down the line. If you're doing online esports, that could make all the difference. But in terms of console gaming, I would argue that the PS5, you could definitely do a lot worse than this SSD. And given its high availability and quite good pricing in UK and Europe, I think this is a decent enough SSD there. But this has been my overview uh, and benchmark review of the Gigabyte Auroros, Auroros S700 or uh, 7000S even. The name of this thing is so different in different regions. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. And of course, do visit the free advice section in the description below to learn more about this disc. And of course, to help you understand what's the right data storage solution for you. We've got the free advice section. We've got constant reviews. It's all there for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.